Good morning. Very warm welcome to this service for the third week of Easter. And if you're joining us online, and a very warm welcome to you um, also. But this isn't too loud. Um, I'll just remind you that after this service is the APCM. It's on your on your pew sheet, but uh, it will be in the notices um, again later. Uh, I also want to mention that we'll be using Eucharistic Prayer B, so we'll just go straight on uh, in the, the order of service. I say that now so that you know we don't have to interrupt things in service, the whole thing will just flow. So you are stood, so let's sing hymn number 157. <laughs> putting away all malice and evil, and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who gives all who truly repent, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
this morning. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. verses 12 to 26. Peter speaks to the crowd after the healing of a lame man. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers also. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore. And turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah appointed for you, that is, Jesus, who must remain in heaven until the time of universal restoration that God announced long ago through his holy prophets. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you from your own people a prophet like me. You must listen to whatever he tells you, and it will be that everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be utterly rooted out from the people. And all the prophets, as these days, you are the descendants of the prophet and of the covenant that God gave to your ancestors, saying to Abraham, And this, your descendants, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you, to you by turning each one of you from your wicked ways, and be blessed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So please stand to sing the hymn on your pew sheet, which is the bottom of the third page.
hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While the eleven and their companions were talking about what they had heard, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, prayer as we stand. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Please sit down. So in the passage we have read from Acts, the Apostle Peter addresses the crowd that has just seen Peter heal a lame man in the name of Jesus, the Messiah of Nazareth. And he uses the title, the author of life, when he refers to Jesus. In fact, in the, in the speech, he uses it in quite a provocative way because he says to the crowd, you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. You killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. We'll be looking at that in a little more detail later on, but I wanted this morning to look at how the risen Jesus' presence as the author of life might strengthen and sustain and direct us as individual disciples of Jesus, but also as a church, as we reflect at our annual prayer church meeting, how our ministry as a church has gone and how we might develop that ministry in the future as we look to the Lord to guide us. Let's look again at the Acts 3 readings. We are told that the crowd are all Israelites, and Peter spells out that it is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, or in other words, it is their God who has glorified Jesus. God has shown his confirmation of Jesus as a suffering Messiah. God has glorified Jesus by making a lame man walk, as he had vindicated Jesus as Messiah by his resurrection and also by his ascension into heaven. The ascension happening probably a few weeks before this speech of the crowd. Peter's speech also proclaims that this same ascended Jesus, who died by crucifixion, is the one who will ultimately fulfil that great covenant promise to Abraham, way back in the first book of the Bible in Genesis, that through Abraham's descendants, all the families of earth shall be blessed. Peter declares, when God raised up his servant, Jesus, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. It was very important to the early church to see how Jesus was fulfilling prophetic words inspired by God in the Jewish scriptures, our Old Testament. In our Gospel reading, uh, the resurrected Jesus appeared to startle disciples. He ate with them, and then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. 
the scriptures identified by the, the laws of Moses, the four, five, first five books of the Bible, the prophetic books like Isaiah, and the Psalms. Jesus' mission was part of God's plan and rooted in God's dealing with humankind in history, as told in the Bible. The collect for today invites us to pray to God to give us such a knowledge of his, Jesus' presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life, sustained by the author of life. So back to Peter, he's talking to the crowd in Jerusalem and he's emphasising the fact that they have actually rejected the Messiah, the holy and righteous one that God has sent. But in fact, Peter's message becomes more conciliatory, or we might say more winsome, very shortly after, because he goes on to say... And now, friends, I know you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. Both Roman occupying rulers and the Jewish religious leaders were involved. But actually, it was part of God's plan. God was fulfilling what he had foretold through the prophets that his Messiah would suffer and die. As the Apostle Paul succinctly puts it in his first letter to the Corinthians, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. In our communion service and later on uh, this morning, the bread and wine are reminding us of Christ's death and renewing our participation in his death. We often say, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. So when Jesus, uh, when Paul says Christ dies for our sins according to the scriptures, perhaps he has in mind verses like Isaiah 53 where we have, but he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. Christ died for our sins, so that forgiveness of sins could be proclaimed. Again, in our Acts reading, we have the exhortation from Peter to the crowd to <coughs> repent, turn around, and to turn to God so that your sins might be wiped out. Christ's death means that we can be forgiven, so we can be given a new start. It means that redemption is possible for us in our lives. This was a central message in the early church, and it continues to be a central and key part of our ministry as a church. Jesus, the author of life, brings redemption and forgiveness. In Peter's speech, he also promises that flowing from the forgiveness of sins will come times of refreshing or renewal. Jesus, while he lived on earth, he embodied the life of the kingdom of God. He said the kingdom had come near, kingdom of God had come near when he came near. Matthew in his gospel <coughs> describes Jesus going about proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God and curing every disease and every sickness of the people. He was bringing life to people who were suffering. And that's part of our ministry today. In our passage from Acts, Peter brings healing to a man born lame by using the name of Jesus. Other organisations can offer different sorts of support, but as a church of the author of life, we can offer to pray for people. This is one of our distinctives. We can offer the healing presence of Jesus. As friends brought a paralytic person to Jesus through a roof, we can bring people to the Lord in prayer. In the first letter of Peter, the church is called a royal priesthood. All believers in Christ have a priestly role to not just play, but to pray. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to um, bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. So Jesus, the author of life, brings healing and refreshing renewal. Christ quoted these words from the prophet Isaiah to describe his ministry. 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and let the oppressed go free. Christ can bring life back from freeing captives. We know sometimes addictions can take hold and suck life away. We know the struggles that we face in life can hold us back. We can lose our way and need direction and insight. Sometimes we face injustice or oppression. Andy and Cathy Walsh, who are our mission partners in CMS in Brazil, have recently shared a story about one of the prisoners at the prison where they visit, who has been finding the light and hope of Jesus amid, amid the bleakness of life in prison. And this prisoner does not understand how he could have possibly ended up in prison. He writes this, One rainy afternoon as I gazed out into the prison courtyard, I felt God's presence and his truth flooding my heart. He assured me of his constant companionship and care. I sensed how God had suffered, the profound injustice Jesus endured. I began journaling the assurances I received from the Lord, and to find solace, I take the messages onto the walls of my cell. These words continue to provide me with peace as I revisited them. I completed a discipleship led by Andrew Walsh to learn how to follow Jesus more faithfully and seek God's first in everything. It was my first experience of studying the Bible in a group setting. I began sharing the good news of Jesus with fellow prisoners, encouraging them to place their faith in the Lord. So copies of this story, um, which I've, one I've got here, are just at the back on the table with the, uh, the visitor's book on, if you'd like to take copies um, at the end to, to read more. Andy and Cathy will also be visiting the church on Sunday the 16th of June and sharing more about their work. They will be both at our 10 a.m. service in church and then spend some time with Messy Church before meeting us all informally for refreshments in the hall. But Jesus, the author of life, brings release, recovery and acceptance. And John, at the start of the gospel, of his gospel, focused on the fact that the word of life existed before he came as God incarnate, and that as author of life, he was involved in the creation of the world, the creation of life. And Paul, in his letter to the Colossians, says, In Christ, or in the Messiah, all things in heaven and on earth were created. So we can be aware of the, Jesus, the author of life, in nature, for example, in the birds that we see and hear, and which Andy often inspires us to look at and appreciate. And as Christ was involved in the creation of all things, just being outside in a park or garden can be restorative and life-giving. Jesus, the author of life, creates and sustains. And as we have seen, the Apostle Paul reminded the Corinthians that Christ was raised on the third day, according to the Scriptures. And Peter actually gives an example of this in, earlier to the crowd. He, he says, For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. Peter was quoting from Psalm 16. And of course, Paul also explains to the Corinthian church that Christ's resurrection gave the hope of resurrection to his followers, to life after death. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ, all will be made alert, alive. But each in turn, Christ the first fruits, and then when he comes, those who belong to him. And at the end of Peter's speech, we had in Acts, he speaks of the time of universal restoration at the end of time, which as the author of life, he will bring when he comes again, when the earth and uh, heaven will be renewed and united, and God will dwell with his people. So Jesus, the author of life, brings resurrection <coughs> hope. So as a church, what should we be characterised by as we are strengthened and sustained by Jesus, the author of life? A place where all can find forgiveness. A place where when we are struggling, we can come and receive mercy and prayerful support. 
a place where when we have lost our way, we can come and find mercy and a place of safety. A place where when we are fearful or anxious, we can come and find mercy and comfort. A place where when we have experienced rejection or discrimination, we can come and find mercy and acceptance. And a place where those who are in pain or unwell can find mercy and Christ's healing presence. And a place where those who are dying can find mercy and resurrection hope. We can't be this place without the knowledge of Christ's living presence with us, strengthening and sustaining us. We need to be ready for the Lord to change us inwardly, to renew our hearts. We need to pray uh, for and with one another as we do this. We recall again that there is a priesthood of all believers, which means that if we have a faith in Jesus, we can bring both ourselves and others to prayer to God. If we are to grow in faith, if we are to deepen our faith, to be rooted, sustained, changed by the author of life, we need to pray, both in our personal prayers at home and different ways together as a church. So what about us as we face the future, as we are strengthened and sustained? What should our emphasis be in this new season, both personally and corporately? We cannot do everything. What is God calling us to do? Let's pray, Let's pray together uh, for the author of life to guide and change us. Let us pray. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladden the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord. Give us such a knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Amen. Please stand as we say the creeds together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And as he is in right hand and the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who will be the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy and Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our prayers. <coughs> Lord, as we bring to you our prayers, 
We ask you to open our ears to hear your words. Open our eyes to see your light. Open our hearts to receive your grace. Open our lips to rejoice. We pray for your church today, gathered all around the world to praise you. Help us to grow in faith in our worship, that way we may be rooted, changed, and sustained by the author of life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Faithful God, we pray for the church throughout the world, and especially for our church here in Marston. We pray for Sky, Joel and Andy as they lead us, and for a successful APCM later this morning. We give thanks for all that has been achieved in the past year, and we look forward to plans for the future. Through our actions, help us to renew a deeper connection with you and your creation. Help us to live sustainably and be better stewards of the natural world. We pray for all those suffering around the world from the effects of climate change. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, open our hearts to the needs of others. May we reflect your love and compassion in our actions, serving those who are suffering or in need. We pray for the work of the mission partners that we support as a church in Brazil, India, and Nepal. We ask that they may be strengthened and encouraged as they work to transform lives through your gospel. We pray that all their needs are met. Lord, in your mercy. In our readings today, Jesus told the disciples, Peace be with you. God of peace and justice, we hold in our hearts all the nations where people are living with the evils of war and conflict. In particular, we pray for the escalating situation in the Middle East. We pray for all world leaders that they may seek peaceful solutions. We pray also for the people of Ukraine and Russia and Gaza for an end of suffering and for a just and sustainable peace. Protect us from indifference to ongoing conflicts far away. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our families, friends and neighbours and for those people with whom we work or share our daily lives, who sustain us. We pray for all those who are lonely or isolated. Make us alert to each other's needs and quick to serve and encourage one another. May our gentleness with each other reflect your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, comfort and heal all those who are in pain or are suffering at this time. We remember especially those who are facing long illnesses. In a moment of quietness, we pray for them and those who are in need at this time. Give them courage and hope. We also remember those who have died. May they rest in peace. Comfort their families in this time of loss. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, as we go out into this coming week, may we be clothed in love, forgiveness, compassion, and humility. And may our words and actions reflect your love and grace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers 
for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. So, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also so let's offer one another a sign of peace. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He's placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ, great is the mystery of faith. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. <laughs> Come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
so just before the final hymn and blessing, a couple of notices. There are many wonderful and exciting things listed in the pew sheet. I will just draw your attention to two, probably guessed one of them. Um, but uh, just on, on the issue of confirmation, uh, there is a confirmation service here on the 14th of July. So please let Sky know if you or anyone you know uh, might uh, wish to uh, be confirmed at that service. Uh, at the moment, uh, Sky says we're thinking of eight classes on Thursday evenings at 7.30. And then the other thing, you may have guessed, <laughs> as we've all mentioned it several times, uh, the APCM, our annual parochial church meeting is after coffee, 11.30, in the hall, our chance to think together, to review what we do, but also to think together about how we reflect the resurrection hope uh, in this church and in the world. And so, let's sing the final hymn, which is number 612 in your common praise. Please stand.
be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So go in peace, in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. Thank you.